Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna give you tips and tricks for Fizbo's that are gonna hit the market. Hey guys, welcome back to The Buzz, coffee and real estate. So we are jumping into, this video is for sale by owner. Okay, mm -hmm. We've been doing kind of a parallel series of if you sold your house yourself versus working with a realtor. And we really wanted to jump into some of the tips and tricks. Okay, yeah. last minute stuff you need to know. Your house is getting ready to hit the market. How do you make sure that you're setting yourself up to where it's smooth and you've got all the last minute details set in place? So just want to throw a bunch of little things at you to keep in mind um, so that you don't end up thinking, man, I wish I'd done that before I pressed the go button. That's right. Because really, once you press the go button, some things mm -hmm. start to happen, right? Yes. Now it's public. Yep. So, I mean, something as simple as you need to make sure you have the right signage. Yeah. So, I mean, like, what would you recommend for signs? I mean, would you, you, I guess you can go to get a typical for sale sign. Sure. You know, at Walmart or wherever, you can get them yeah. wherever. Yeah. But what, as far as signage goes, what would you be doing front yard as opposed to like other signage, maybe around the neighborhood or what? What, what, what do you recommend? Sure, I definitely would do something in the yard. Mm -hmm. And I would make sure that you're putting your phone number in large format. <laughs> Because, Not microscopic down in the yes, corner like we've seen? Don't write it with a pencil. Write it with like a, a large Sharpie so yeah. that you can read it from a distance. Yeah. Um, and put your name on there, not just your number. Yeah. Um, I would make sure that you put directional, so you're gonna put those at like any entrance way that's coming into your neighborhood. So if you are uh, coming in from multiple areas, then you know put out multiple signs. Yep. But I would have some type of directionals pointing people in the direction of your home. I've seen for sale by owners. Now you'd have to get it done at a place to be a little more expensive, but like with a QR code oh, on yeah. the sign. Yeah. You know, and that would take someone to say a Zillow link yep. or something like that. So. You could totally do that as well. I'm not a big fan personally of putting like the old fashioned info box with the pieces of paper that get yeah. rained on. Oh yeah. Or somebody takes all 75 of them because they don't want anybody else to see the house. Yeah. You know, so I, that just, I've not seen that work. Yeah. Almost every one of those boxes doesn't have any papers in it or it's broken or falling apart or oh, something. Yeah. So, um, and then you're going to have to have some way that a, a, a potential buyer or buyer's agent can access the home. Yep. So what would you even set in place for something like that? Sure. Well, I mean, there's a couple of options. I mean, the most probably easiest and inexpensive is just getting a lockbox and putting it on the front door. From Lowe's, 40 bucks, something like that, Home Depot. Yep. yep. Amazon, wherever you want to get it. Little combination, from. numbers or letters. Yeah. Yep. Make sure you don't do like the old twisty knobs because those things Turn are Turn twice to the right. Turn back once <laughs> to the left. Turn three times to the right. Yeah. We still see some people that use those and they are a nightmare. But yeah, I would do a four combination lock. Uh, it would be easy. If, you, if you're if you worried about heightened, heightening security, you yeah. can do some of the other like electronic or Bluetooth type boxes. But most of the time, realtors are going to be the ones that have access to Well, those. and the more complicated you make it, the more likely you're going to have a legitimate buyer or a legitimate yeah. buyer's agent who can't get into boxes. We've had that before. Yeah these fancy Bluetooth boxes and you go through all the instructions, it still doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, okay, I'd really love to show my client the house, but we're going to keep moving on because we're behind schedule now. So yep. that does make a lot of sense. Having something that it's, yes, it's secure. You're going to put the key to that door. That door. <laughs> so if you put it on your front door and I'd put it, you know, the best first impression we've seen on front door, side door, back door. Um, but the best first impression of the home, put the key to that door That's right. in there. Okay. Just, we're trying to dummy proof the thing. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to put it on the front door. You don't want to put it on your back door or your side door or coming in your garage. That's not a very good impression initially anyway. Yeah, for sure, so. for sure. And then contact info. Yep. I mean, you mentioned about making sure it's prominently displayed on mm -hmm. your for sale sign. Yep. But like Zillow, I've noticed on that listing, unless you put it in the description, the phone number for yourself is down below their recommendation of like yeah. 37 realtors. Yep. So I tell people if you're listing on Zillow, yes, put your when you're inputting to Zillow, put your phone number, but it's going to be down at the like very bottom of the page right yep. after the elementary school recommendation, you know, some, some <laughs> stupid place. Put it in your description. Um, make sure that you've got your contact info prominently displayed in multiple locations both online yes. and on the yard sign because the last thing you want to do is have somebody that could buy your house and literally can't find out how to get in contact with you. That's exactly right. Well, and one thing that I've noticed with Zillow is a lot of times they'll put the name of the person. Mm -hmm. So it just says seller. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, who am I calling? And so a lot of times I would put something in there, you know, call so-and-so at this number yep. for more information. Yep. Put yep. that in the description line yep. uh, would be helpful. You can also, I mean, just 
for short form, you got Zillow, you have forsalebyowner.com, you've got a couple of those different avenues, yep. you got Facebook, yep. uh, Marketplace. Yep. I'd put it on any of those platforms that you can possibly put it on. Well, and another aspect of that too is think about it this way. If you're doing a for sale by owner, you're trying to avoid cost, right? right. That's the number one reason people of, uh, do a for sale by owners to avoid some of the real estate cost, which means that you need to go overboard in making a potential buyer or buyer's agent feel secure, mm -hmm. setting expectations up front. That's right. You know, you need to have in your description, and I think we said this in an earlier video, here's how much I'm willing to, to pay a buyer's agent, mm -hmm. okay? Have that prominently displayed so that you're making those people feel secure. Because again, if this home has not been listed by an agent, then it has no real safeguard. Yep. So I could be going into somebody's uh, hoodlum's house. I could be going into whoever's house. I don't really know. And so the better communication you have, you have to go really overkill because yep. you don't have the natural reputation or clout of having a professional selling the home for you, yep. which means you have to act like a professional. That's right. Over communicate, over simplify, all of those sorts of things um, to be able to do it. So you mentioned about additional security. Yep. But again, another piece of that puzzle is, I mean, should a seller be at the house when somebody comes to look at it? Should they not be at the house when somebody comes to look at it? What, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of times what happens when you are a seller and you're putting your house on market and you're there is that, and I, I mean, I would do this. If I'm an agent coming in, I'm going to ask you every question I can think of because most likely you're going to tell me. Mm. Whereas if I had an agent, they're not going to give an answer. Mm. So, you mean you mean the seller is probably not a professional negotiator is what that's you're right. saying. So they may come in and, you know, so what, what kind of price are you looking to get? You know, and you're right. like, eh, you start fidgeting, right. you don't really answer, right. you kind of, and you can tell that you're not solid on your price or stuff like that. Yeah. So looking for weakness, so not being there is probably the best case scenario. Okay. Or if you don't feel comfortable with that, having somebody who's not a part of the party, like they're not a part of the transaction. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You know, maybe it's dad or it's grandma yeah. or aunt or whoever yeah. or uncle or something. It's actually they not a bad there. idea. Somebody that you trust but who doesn't have all the answers yep. and who can legitimately say, like, I don't know. Yep, exactly. Well, the other piece of that, too, is that we've had buyers where we brought a buyer in. The seller is in there. Let's say they're sitting in the living room watching yep. TV. It's really uncomfortable. You oh, know, a buyer's is. really not as comfortable walking through a house, yeah. either falling in love with it or dismissing it. They're kind of like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel mm -hmm. nervous because this is the seller. I don't really want to say anything. It just puts, it puts a buyer on guard. Yeah. And that's the whole point. You're trying to not have a buyer coming into a situation with fear. If they come mm -hmm. in with fear, they push away and they shut down. Yep. Okay. You want them to come in with openness. Just like when we talked about prepping the home, that you have that first 10 seconds feels open, airy, and safe. That's right. Right? And so even your presence at the house could cause someone to feel unsafe oh, yeah. or like they can't really express their feelings or opinions. And um, to me, that only hurts the transaction. Well, and then they don't, you know, they don't investigate as much either. Like, it, you know, they're not going to look in your closets because they feel like it's awkward or they're not going to look in your pantry or, mm. you know, cabinets and so mm. forth. Where is, that's what you want them. You want you, them to do those things. You really so do. It Which means that firearms, get those out of the house. Yeah. Um, prescription meds, yep. get those out of the house and valuables like yep. jewelry, get yep. those out of the house. Uh, you want to make sure that all those things are safely stored somewhere else. It could be a, if, if it's a safe inside the house, but mm -hmm. you certainly don't want to come back after you're trying to help sell the home yourself, somebody's looked at it, and all of a sudden it's like, uh, where's my ring? <laughs> where's my gun? You know, yeah. these, these types of things that can be very unnerving. So, oh, totally. um, so last-minute declutter. I know yeah. we talked about declutter in one of the earlier episodes, yeah. but last-minute declutter. Okay, that's that, that's that chair that you love. It's in a great location, but you know you need to move it right before the thing goes on the market, yep. right? Okay, let's make sure that the things are there. Let's Don't leave the stinky trash there. Clean out the litter box. Yes. Better yet, get the litter box out of the house completely. Yeah. You know, all those sorts of um, little last minute odds and ends. I walked in a house the other day, exquisite house, but they left like um, leftovers from where they just ate lunch. Mm. You know, like an old Bojangles wrapper sitting out on the kitchen counter. I'm sure that if they thought about it, they would have gotten it up, but it, it didn't keep us from buying the house, but it was just like, wow, this is a gorgeous house. Oh. You know, sort of, yes. sort of feeling there. So just doing that last minute walk of the house before someone is showing up, but better yet, really decluttering as much as you can. Closets, oh, yeah. good. You know, if you got to stick stuff, stick it in the closet. Yep. Stick it in a garage. Stick it in a storage building. Um, but you've got kind of the initial declutter, and then you've got that you're still living your life, and you just don't realize 
Exactly. That something's there. Well, you want to make sure it looks like it did when you took pictures. You don't want it to be like, oh, it's a super neat house, and now it's normal house. Like, you need to keep that consistency, and you need to keep that consistency through showings. So when people walk in the house, they feel like, oh, well, the picture is doing justice versus, ah, I feel lied to. Because if I feel lied to about a picture, I'm going to feel lied to about other things. What else is wrong? That's right. Yeah, I mean, let's make it really obvious. Flush the toilets. Yes. Put the toilet seats down. Put toilet paper in the bathroom. Remove the uh, toilet plunger or toilet bowl cleaner brushes from mm -hmm. around the toilet. You know, just all those little simple things, just like when you took pictures. I mean, that's a that's great right. rule of thumb, right? You wouldn't want to take a picture of your bathroom and it's got a big plunger sitting right there. Therefore, when somebody shows up, make sure those things are out, they're under cabinetry, they're, they're, exactly. they're away. Anything that smells bad. Yes. I mean, I've had people, they'll bake cookies. You know, oh. just don't burn cookies That's right, right before <laughs> someone shows up. Um, you know, so having it smelling really good. I would caution against something here. I've had some people that have felt like more uh, air freshener is oh, better. Man, it's Th terrible. There is not a scale more air freshener is better. Okay, this is not like this that goes up into oblivion. It is a bell curve. Yes. So if you've got, let's say, pet smells or smoke smells or something, don't try to mask it with an air freshener. It's yep. the oldest trick in the book. All it does is make you look like you're trying to hide something. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to have something smelling good, but when it's, I walk in and it just slaps me in the face. And actually, a lot of people, uh, my wife included, yeah. it, they have allergic reactions or yeah. just they'll get headaches from air fresheners. Don't pump the house full of uh, air fresheners, please. It doesn't. It doesn't fix the problem. That's right. Um, I guess is is what I'm trying to say. So uh, you know, something with a uh, air freshener diffuser, those are okay, but don't go overboard with it. Yeah. Um, okay. So declutter. We've talked about some of the security issues. We talked about some of the contact info. Um, here's a, a really big thing. You're going to have realtors that you're going to have to deal with. That's right. And man, you got to watch out for realtors. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you could have buyer agents who are representing a buyer, legitimately representing a buyer, okay? And of course, they want to come in, they want to have proper expectations of what they're going to get paid. Yep. They want to have all the documentation. We talked about filling out all the forms. You know, you can have some of those sitting on the counter. You certainly want to have where they can access those things. Um, sometimes they want to be able to see them before they ever show the house, oftentimes. Mm. So have a quick, easy way that you can get those to them. Uh, but also, you could be handling people, I mean, like... I, I don't know what magic list it is, but realtors can pay for a list of all the for sale by owners that have just hit the market or for sale by owners that yes. have had, they've been on the market for 60 days or 90 days or 100 days or whatever. And so you're going to get bombarded with realtors who like, you know, I don't know why you're trying to sell your house for 225. I could sell it for 415, you know. Understand, just like we said That's right. in an earlier video, there's a bait and switch element there, right? Yep. Okay, they're trying to get a listing so that they can then end up selling it for market rate. So you need to be crystal clear on that you've done your research on pricing. That's right. Because you're going to get phone calls from a realtor. Hey, let me sell your house. Hey, let me sell your house. Hey, let me sell your house. It's okay if you end up selling your house with a realtor, obviously. Yep. You know, we work with people like that all the time. But don't just pick the person that annoyed you so badly that you finally said yes. Yeah. Okay? That's not the right realtor to use. Um, that's just the person who's obstinate enough to, to get the get the listing. So um, be understand when it's time to talk to a realtor if you've not been able to sell it, do the proper research. I mean, we're, we, we, we'll have videos on there. We've got some, I think, mm. discussing all that already, but we're really going to dive deep into how to interview agents and all of that. Yep. Um, so there's that aspect of it. You're going to have to handle agents. The nice thing is if you've got yeah. a, a buyer agent who brings a buyer and something does go missing, you at least have somebody you can track down and blame yes. for it. You know, I mean, it still would be difficult to get something back, but yeah. you know, at least an agent's going to, they're online, their contact info is online there. So it's trackable. But yeah. Another element of, of agents, I think, is knowing that an agent is always looking for information. Mm. So be really careful what you share with them. One, because some things don't need to be shared and they're not supposed to be shared. There are things like material facts that need to be shared about a property or something. But like they're going to call you and they're going to ask, well, why are you moving? And then you're going to go into a long list of reasons and say, well, you know, I bought a house already. I'm under contract on it and we got to close in 45 days. And then they've got all the ammunition in the world to push back on you, sure. especially in an inspection or an appraisal right. or getting closer to right. closing dates or stuff right. like that. So you don't want to share those things. You want to be very minuscule with information. Hey, I'm selling my house. Uh, I got a job transfer. 
okay, great, or I got a divorce, or whatever. But I would right. keep it as concise as that, right? So that it, it puts people at ease on why you're selling, but it does not give a an overindulgence of information. It's okay to give an answer. Yes, an answer is good, but go ahead and rehearse your answer ahead of time mm -hmm. so that it doesn't communicate motivational information. Yeah. Hey, I'm desperate. I got to get out. Yeah. You know, hey, my neighbor uh, plays rock music all night long, you know, <laughs> out in his garage. You know, whatever those things are, make sure that you're communicating, okay, here's where I'm making a move. I need to make a job transfer. I need to whatever, you know, but just, you don't want to be caught off guard because those are some common questions that somebody's going to ask you. Oh, totally. Um, and then also make sure you have your invoices for recent updates or repairs that you've yes. done. Hey, we just had a new roof put on last year. Here's the invoice for it. We just had the HVAC serviced. Here's the invoice for it. Just so the, some of those sorts of things so you're kind of prepared. Yep. Um, because again, you're going up against even a, an agent who's representing their buyer. They are a professional negotiator. Their mm -hmm. job is to gain information for their client. And that's there's right. nothing wrong in that. You just need to understand that that's what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yep. Um, what day of the week? Like if you're talking about, hey, I'm ready to press the go button on this thing. I've done all my check boxes. When do you suggest it actually hitting the market? Sure. I mean, I, I would say what we've typically done is we'll hit market on a Thursday or a Friday. Okay. Get it ready for the weekend. Most people want to be able to do that. You don't want to put your listing out there as coming soon for long periods of time, like two or three weeks or okay. something like that, because then people forget about it. If you want to do that, maybe put it as coming soon Tuesday and Wednesday, hit market Thursday. That way they're ready for it to hit weekend. Mm. And that way they can kind of see it going. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably your best strategy. Try to do an open house maybe over the weekend. That way when you hit Monday, you have a good idea. You've given enough time, enough sure. notice for somebody to be able to make offers. Yeah. And you either have gotten a realistic offer at that point that you're negotiating or you're ready for, you know, gearing up for that next week and weekend. That's right. Um, also letting people know like, hey, here's when the home is available to be shown. Go yes. ahead and decide that ahead of time. If you work from home, if you got pets, you know, I know we've talked about just the, the ins and outs of pets, getting yeah. pets out of the house, getting them out. You don't want to have the big guard dog in the backyard where people are like, <laughs> burr, 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 burr. you know, when they first pull up to the driveway, that doesn't give them a sense of feeling safe, open, mm. airy, light, all of that. So to the degree that you can, try to get pets out of there. A lot of people are allergic to pets, so if you don't want them in close proximity um, during showings. Sure. But yeah, I mean, if you're hitting kind of that pre-weekend, yep. that seems like a, a, a good time to, yes. to launch something. So um, any other last minute kind of final thoughts of, of, of what you're thinking for any of that? Um, just, you know, be in mind of that you're going to probably have two or three cars that are going to be pulling up to your house at any given time. It might be a husband and a wife and then the agent. Mm. So making sure that there's places for people to be able to park or that you've, you know, emptied the driveway yep. so that they can do that. Yep. If you have a bunch of extra cars, don't park all of them there mm -hmm. so that people, one, it, it just, it leaves, a, it leaves a bad impression. First impression, you're kind of pulling in, you're like, oh, this guy's got 10 cars in the driveway. Yeah. So I would try to minimize that so that they see the house and nothing else. Mm. Um, so parking wise, being able to pull in the driveway, um, you know, put your stuff in the garage, things of that nature. Yeah. But I think those are, are big ones. Um, like you said, you've already kind of hit on a lot of the high notes. So yeah. I can't think of anything else that would be really detrimental. I mean, you're going to, you, you want to have, and we'll say this multiple times, you're, when, you, when the house first hits the market, you're going to have this uptick in traffic, mm -hmm. okay? Everybody wants to see the new listing, right? Boom, boom, it hits. This is new. It's a new house. I mean, especially in, in the inventory shortages that we've had, you got people that are just sitting waiting for that next house to go on the market. So it, you're going to have this natural uptick in your, your, your traffic on your home, how many people are coming to see yeah. your house. And then over the course of the first few weeks, it's going to start to taper down. And so understand that that's your bubble. You know, that's that's like, right. Be ready. When you press the go button, <laughs> it needs to be cleaned out, ready to go, all of your ducks in a row. Because if you, if, if you set a bad impression in those first few weeks, even though it got super clean and super nice after that, that's right. nobody really knows. Because yep. <laughs> they're on to the next one. So um, just making sure, you know, like in so many things in life, a little bit of extra preparation up front that's right. causes a better result down the road. Exactly. So. Yeah. So guys, we thank you for watching this video. Oh. If you know anybody else that you would want to share this information with, or if you have questions, put some comments in the in the description below just to be able to answer some of your stuff for you. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to the next video. I think the next one's going to be talking about price drops. Yep. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the next one.